Wow. You're in exactly the right place at the right time. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. You know what's fascinating about this entire debate? And here it is in front of the Supreme Court. It's not like I hide my opinion. I have millions and millions of you. Same with Fox. Same with the Blaze. I specifically said on Fox, during Life, Liberty, and Levin, I have said behind this microphone, when dear colleagues were dismissing this entire movement on Section 3, 14th Amendment, as an outlier, it's no big deal, so forth and so on. Now they're all experts on it. That this needs to be blunted and needs to be stopped. And I laid out the reasons for it. I've posted some of them on our social media sites within the last hour. Laid out the case against the ballot removal arguments because I saw them coming from Lawrence Tribe. Michael Ludig, and other absolute unhinged obsessed morons. Former circuit judge, former Harvard professor. And it needed to be addressed, so I addressed it. All these arguments you're hearing now on TV and all these arguments you're hearing from the justices and so forth, you're familiar with all of them, those of you who listen to this program, because we laid them out. Hook, line, and singer. Sinker. Now this report comes out on Trump. So I'm thinking about this as I have in the past. Back in August of 2021, I made the case that Joe Biden should be removed under the 25th Amendment because of his dementia. I said it on Sean Hannity's program. I said specifically on Fox, that the standards of the 25th Amendment were more than met. 4 p.m. today, Eastern Time, I posted it again, that this report underscores that Joe Biden is an imbecile. I don't say that in a derogatory way, I say in a legal way. He's an imbecile. Special counsel met with him for a few hours, interviewed him, and concluded the same thing. He didn't know when he was vice president or when the vice presidency ended. He didn't know what year his son passed away. The man is in stage five dementia. As told you before, there's seven stages. He's in stage five. So I post that the 25th Amendment should be used. So one of our friends, one of our hosts, two hours later or so, waves around the Constitution, talks about the 25th Amendment. I don't want a pat on the back. I'm just telling you folks, you're in the right place at the right time. You're in the right place at the right time. The next battle is going to be over Section 4 of the 14th Amendment when it comes down to spending. We have fought that battle before, and we will fight it again. And then suddenly, everybody will find Section 4 of the 14th Amendment and debate it and litigate. What I do, not just for a career, is I study this document like few have. Every damn word, every damn syllable. Not because I don't know it, but because the enemies of this republic who've coalesced into the Democrat Party are trying to undo every syllable, every word, every sentence in the document. So we have to be prepared to defend it. I don't just come along as a legal analyst and start commenting on things that are happening. I'm telling you what they're doing and that they're coming. And that's what they're going to do. This 25th Amendment issue immediately came to my mind when I started reading this report. Now what the prosecutor and his office have done is not find anything novel or new, but they have swagger because of who they are and what they are that others don't. It's now officially in a report sent to Congress, sent to the Department of Justice that the whole world can read. 
They went in and interview Joe Biden, and they had to come out of there stunned. They didn't know when his vice presidency ended. He didn't know when his son died. He couldn't remember anything. Now, some who play act, that would be rope dope But that's not rope dope when you're in stage five dementia. The Democrats today, the media today, same thing, are very upset by this report. But you should be furious for several reasons. Number one, they have every intention of trying to nominate a man to the presidency who shouldn't be anywhere near the grounds of the White House. He is a sick man, making life and death decisions for our country, for other countries like Israel. He is a sick man. And I said this to you either earlier this week or last week. And it's not the first time. The idea that his wife, the idea that his staff, the idea that his friends, the idea that the media and the Democrat Party and Joe Scarborough and his ilk, will continue to promote this man, continue to try and protect him, continue to lie to their audiences, to their readers, to the American people. Oh, he's sharp. He's sharp as can be. The same way they lie about the border. The border's secure. Oh, it's not secure. So it's actually the fault of the Republicans. If they would just pass our law. The question I have for the rest of America, how much longer are you going to put up with this? The 25th Amendment. I want to congratulate those, the host who, uh, who reads my site. They all should read it, quite frankly. Here's the 25th Amendment. Section 1. In case of the removal of the president from office or his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. Section 2. Whenever there is a vacancy in the office of the vice president, the president shall nominate a vice president who shall take office upon confirmation by a majority vote of both houses of Congress. That's how Gerald Ford became president. Section 3. Whenever the president transmits to the president pro tem of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives his written declaration that he is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, And until he transmits to them a written declaration to the contrary, such powers and duties shall be discharged by the vice president as acting president. Now, if Joe Biden were a patriot, if his wife was a loving wife and patriot, she would pressure him and he would tell the Speaker of the House and the President Pro Tem of the Senate that he's unfit to serve. But he's running for re-election with the full support of his party and the media. Section 4. Whenever the vice president, this is important, and a majority of either the principal officers of the executive departments, or the cabinet secretaries, or if such other body as Congress may by law provide, it is not, transmit to the president pro tem of the Senate and the speaker, of the House, the written declaration that the President is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, the Vice President shall immediately assume the powers and duties of the office as acting President. Not one Cabinet Secretary has said so. The Vice President hasn't. And you have this Hollywood uh, stick figure, Gruesome Newsom, who's running around telling the American people Joe Biden is the smartest, swiftest, most accomplished president in American history because he is a lousy, good-for-nothing political hack. Every damn cabinet officer that serves this president knows exactly what's going on. The vice president does. Every media outlet knows exactly the same thing. Whenever the vice president, a majority of either the principal officers, so you need... Kamala Harris and a majority of the cabinet. Thereafter, when the president transmits to the president pro tem of the Senate and the Speaker of the House, his written declaration that no inability exists, so the president says, wait a minute. 
I'm the brightest guy to ever serve here. In fact, I'm running for re-election. Despite the vice president and a majority of the cabinet saying, I think we have a problem here. What happens? He shall resume the powers and duties of his office unless the vice president and a majority of either the principal officers of the executive departments, that's vice president and majority of the cabinet, transmit within four days to the president pro tem of the Senate and the Speaker of the House their written declaration that the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. So the vice president and majority of the cabinet, they tell the Senate president, and they tell the Speaker that how this guy, he's not cutting it. We're sorry. I, Kamala, need to step in. I'll deal with that in a minute. The president says, wait a minute. I'm quite capable of doing this job. I'll send my own letter. Now, of an impasse. That the Vice President and majority of the Cabinet must yet again write the Senate President and the Speaker of the House and say, uh, he's wrong. They have to do it within four days of the president writing it. Their written declaration has to state the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. Thereupon, Congress shall decide the issue. Assembling with 48 hours for that purpose, if not in session, if the Congress within 21 days after receipt of the latter written declaration, or if Congress is not in session, within 21 days after Congress is required to assemble, determines by two-thirds vote of both houses the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, so it takes a two-thirds vote of both houses, the vice president shall continue to discharge the same as acting president. And if they fail, the president continues his duties. Follow that, Mr. Producer? But none of this has been triggered. None of it. So the 25th Amendment to the Democrats is a dead letter because all they care about is power. power. This is why one of the lead slip and fall ambulance chasing lawyers in this case for Joe Biden has said it was inappropriate for the special counsel to make these remarks. No, it's the most appropriate thing he could have done. Because Joe Biden has been hiding like a veal calf. No access to him. Media has no real access to him unless it's a slobbering interview by Joe Scarborough or somebody like that. No questions, no speeches, no interviews, unless the speech is written, it's a friendly audience, mumbles through it, and they laugh like clapping seals. We all know this to be true, all of us. And he's doing very dangerous things, the open borders. Now he's siding with Hamas against Israel. You know what he decided today? Blinken's put it out. Kirby's put it out. The spokes idiot at the Department of Defense have all said the same thing. Israel has one last section to defeat Hamas. It's where the Hamas leaders are. It's where the remaining Hamas terrorists are. They're gearing up to take them on, to destroy them. And Biden and Blinken have given the order, no, we do not support you doing this. It's come out of the Defense Department, the State Department, the National Security Council, the Office of the White House. And everybody, do not defeat Hamas. That's what they're saying. Today. Today. This document should trigger extensive discussion about the 25th Amendment. All over the country, all over the media. The host who waved it around today. I don't expect him or her. I'm not going to die in front of the person to explain where she or he originally saw it, but that's okay. It needs to expand on talk radio, on Fox, and any other legitimate news platform, of which there are very few. 